Hey guys, welcome back. It's Missy. And if you're new here, welcome. I am a life and relationship coach and on this channel we get to the root of the issue and we learn how to heal and deal. So if that's your thing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I would love for you to be a part of the fam. Also, if you're ever interested in my coaching services, I have a website that I'll link down below where you can contact me. So going into today's video, today's video is something that I think is really important to understand and that's gaslighting. We're going to go into why a person gaslights, the signs that they're gaslighting, signs that you've been gaslighted, and how to deal with it. In my opinion, I feel like gaslighting is the number one worst abuse that you can ever endure. So that's why I think it's so important that we become educated and we are aware of the signs to look out for. So gaslighting is a form of manipulation and it's where the manipulator tries to get you to question your sanity. You know you're being gaslit when someone is completely invalidating you, belittling your experience, and trying to portray that you're crazy and their narrative is correct. So what happens is, is they'll use certain phrases, which we'll go into in a minute, um, you know, saying things like, you're imagining things, you're crazy, you're overly sensitive, and they'll say things like that over and over again and ask you questions that constantly question if you're correct. And what happens is, is eventually you start to get to a point where you react to it, um, you know, because no one likes to be questioned and made to feel crazy. Our sanity is everything. So then when that happens, you then will react to it. You'll maybe show anger. And then the, the manipulator, the abuser is like, see, look, this is exactly what I said. This is what I'm talking about. This is why you can't trust yourself. Look how you're behaving. And then you're like, oh, shoot, I am behaving like this. Does this mean that they're correct? Does this mean I am crazy? I can't trust myself. I, I, there are all the things they've been saying. And it's because they're pushing their belief on you of who they want you to be. And then you are reacting off of it. So when you react off of it, which is reactive abuse, you're reacting off the abuse. It then reinforces like, oh no, they're correct. So you're probably wondering, why would someone want to do this? What kind of person would do this? Well, someone who lacks self-awareness, that's someone who does it. Uh, you know, there's, there's, I've read tons of things where some people say like, oh, you know, they're aware, gaslighters are aware of what they're doing. And there's some gaslighters who have talked about how they're aware of it. And then there are other people who are completely unaware. And so in my opinion, who really knows if they're aware they're doing it or not. But one thing is for sure is that they lack self-awareness and they have really extreme low self-worth and a lot of insecurities and they don't deal with those insecurities. So they, when you have all those insecurities, you don't deal with them you then don't want to take responsibility when things go wrong or when you do things. So you will deflect, you will belittle other people's experiences. You don't want to deal with it. So you'll put a shield up and make it seem like it's the other person. It's much easier to make other people responsible rather than yourself. And that's what happens when you don't deal with your insecurities, when you don't deal with your inner child wounds. It has to come out some way. So it comes out with manipulating other people rather than dealing with their insecurities. They make sure that no one can hurt them. They put up the shield, no one can hurt them. Everyone else is the problem. I don't know how to communicate, so I'm gonna get everyone else to do what I want. Um, you know, I'm gonna manipulate them to do what I want. And I can't accept no. And I can't accept that other people are the way they are. They don't know how to have a healthy relationship. They don't know how to accept no. They don't know how to accept that there's things that they do wrong. And so they want other people around them to be exactly how they want. And they wanna strip their victim sense of self. So it's a lot easier to manipulate them. When their victim doesn't have their sanity, then the manipulator can do whatever they want to the victim. They can say what they want. They can get away with a lot more things. It's a way for them to be in control. It's a way for them to not have to take responsibility. So they will deflect responsibility. It makes them feel in control again. When they can be a victim, they can blame other people. They make it seem like the other person is crazy or they're doing something. They feel in control. And then they belittle what you're going through and they don't have to deal with that experience. They don't have to take ownership. They don't have to take care of it. They don't have to make you feel better. They can strip away everything that you are. So the focus is solely on them. These people want their relationships to be very one-sided. They get everything they want, but then when it comes to you, they don't want you to have your own person. They don't want you to have your own feelings and opinions. They just want you to do what they want. And they also wanna make sure that you don't make them feel bad in any type of way or make them seem like they're wrong in any type of way. Most gaslighters have been gaslit themselves when they were young. So 
it could have been the only way they learned how to get their way, get their needs met. When you're desperate, you'll do anything to have your needs met. So one of the biggest tactics that people who, when they feel like their needs aren't met, they'll manipulate. And with the lack of self-awareness, they are not able to understand how they're feeling, what's going on with them. Instead of being able to communicate that, they immediately are like, I need this, so I'm gonna get this thing. So a few signs that show that you're dealing with someone that gaslights is they don't wanna hear what you have to say. They'll cut you off. They won't give you the time of day uh, to be able to speak about what you're going through or if you have a conflict. It doesn't matter to them. If it's not something they wanna talk about, then they don't want to have that space for you where you can share what's going on. Another thing is they'll make you doubt yourself. So they'll ask questions, even if it's nice questions, they'll say things like, are you really sure that's what you said? I don't think that's what you said. I think that you said this. And they'll do it over and over again. Or if you want something, they'll say, are you sure you want that? I don't think you really want that. I really think that you want this. And they'll do that over and over again. And then eventually when someone hears that over and over again, they eventually start to doubt themselves and question themselves and be like, do I really want that? You know, maybe they know what's best for me. When you hear this over and over again, you eventually feel like you're wrong, like you're doing something. Another sign is they'll dismiss your feelings. They'll belittle anything you're feeling. They will make it feel like you can't have feelings and that you're sensitive, you're crazy, you're over dramatic, you imagine things. They'll just make sure to dismiss or belittle anything you're feeling and they'll make you feel like you don't matter and you don't have a say in things. And you will always feel like you're wrong and they're always correct. I already mentioned some of the phrases they'll say, but to go through a couple more, they'll say things like, you're so dramatic, you're overreacting, you always do this, oh, here we go again. You know you don't remember things clearly. You're making that up, that's a lot. You know, your imagination's going wild again, like they do that a lot. They make you feel like you're crazy and your mind is the problem you know it's because you're so insane. You know, you'll hear little things like that. You know, I'm doing this because I care about you. That's another thing is they'll maybe say in a compassionate or looking like it's compassionate caring. Like, you know, I only do that because I care about you. And you know, I'm the only one that really cares about you. And I only say this so that way you can have a better life. They'll do this to reinforce that they're the only one that, they, that you can count on. They're the one that you can trust. Um, and they're trying to reveal, or they're trying, and they're trying to make it seem like they have the best intentions. Manipulation is all about making things look pretty, but behind it is a hidden agenda. They'll say things like that to strip away your own identity, so that way it's a lot easier to control you. It's a lot easier to manipulate you when you don't have a sense of self, when you don't think about yourself. They can manipulate you to do exactly what they want. And that's what, exactly what they're doing by saying these things over and over again. It eventually becomes the voice in your own head. So how do you know you've been gaslighted in the past? This, this is hard. This breaks my heart. Gaslighting makes me so angry. It's, it's so infuriating that this happens to people. But okay, going into knowing that you've been gaslighted in the past, you constantly question your reality. So when things happen, you ask yourself kind of the same ways that your gaslighter asked you, like, am I sure about this? You know, did this really happen? Maybe, uh, you know, I'm wrong in this situation. You now gaslight yourself. You will ask yourself or maybe even others, like, am I crazy? You know, like, is this me just being crazy? Am I just being too sensitive again? I'm, I'm just, I'm just too sensitive. So because you question your reality, this causes you to doubt yourself. So you will now doubt everything that you're feeling. You will doubt your intuition, which is really major. Um, you will doubt any feelings you have. You will doubt that it's other people. You may think like, it's me, like I'm the problem. I don't, I, maybe I'm not correct in this. You will overly apologize. So you will say sorry for things. This is something you had to do with your gaslighter is like you had to immediately like um, downplay the situation. You needed to calm the situation so you would apologize take fault for things now here's the thing it's great to be able to self-reflect and see where you went where you went wrong but you also need to hold other people accountable and see where they went wrong otherwise you will wind up in these situations where you're being gaslit so don't forget like you can see like oh yeah i went wrong in this like i i want to do better in this area but also think like okay this is what they did too they did this wrong and i need to be aware of that you take too much accountability 
Another thing is you may make excuses for other people's bad behavior. This is much easier for you to take accountability rather than looking at the other people, the other person and what they're doing wrong. It's a lot easier to be like, okay, no, I'm sorry, it's like my fault, rather than being like, hey, you did this to me. It's harder to stand up to those people, especially when you feel like your sanity is at stake. Again, with intuition, not trusting your intuition, you feel something's wrong, but you don't know what it is. And that's your intuition kicking in like, hey, listen, like, you know, you, something's not right like this isn't matching up with that person saying but you doubt that intuition you don't listen to that intuition you rather listen to your abuser because they have bullied you into believing them and trusting them um, because of that reactive abuse you will also have trouble making decisions you may be fear making the wrong decision or doing something incorrectly or maybe even upsetting your gaslighter. So even if the gaslighter's not around, you will be afraid, like, I can't trust myself, I don't know what I'm doing. My abuser, well, obviously I'm saying my abuser, but you'll say like, um, my so-and-so says that, you know, I can't make this right decision and that will always play in your head. So you will fear not making the right decisions. Another thing is like, if you were in a child that was gaslit, if you're an adult, which like being a child that was gaslit, so horrible. But if you were an adult that was gaslit and you used to be like a happy, positive person and now you're anxious and depressed, or if you're a child and you are just naturally anxious and depressed, this is another sign that you've been gaslit in the past. Um, you know, they've stripped away who you are and they've made you this person that's in survival now. And then the last thing is you never feel good enough. You never feel like what you're doing is enough and you feel this constant stress and, and horrible feelings about yourself and your self-esteem is low and your self-confidence is really low. This is because no matter what you did, your gaslighter made you feel like it wasn't enough. You, you didn't have enough evidence. Your opinion didn't matter. You didn't matter. You didn't have a voice. So you always, every time you tried, it just was never enough. It didn't matter. So now when you try things, your confidence is low and you just feel like, oh, this is never enough. I'm never good enough. No one will ever love me. I'm not lovable. I'm never going to be good enough. Now that we went through all things gaslighting, let's talk about how do we handle this horrible abuse. The first thing is always to identify it. Identify when you're hearing these phrases, identify how you're feeling, you know, that intuition, something doesn't feel right. Identify the type of people you're around. It's important to identify and recognize that it's happening. That's always the first sign. The first major thing is to recognize. Now here's the thing, if someone says like, oh, you're so sensitive, that doesn't immediately mean they're gaslighting. It's really about when you confront them, how do they handle it? That's what will really reveal if you're dealing with a gaslighter or not. Or someone like, because like I said, some people, they don't really realize that they're doing it. It was like a survival tactic. So sometimes like when you bring it up to someone, they're like, oh shoot, like I do do that. And then they realize like that it's something, a major change they need to make in their life. So I'd say don't immediately don't really ride them off without seeing how they react when you express yourself to them. So if you say, if you let them know like, hey, uh, I really don't like it when you tell me I'm overly sensitive. Could you please stop saying that? Or if you say, hey, I really don't appreciate when you tell me I'm imagining things. Could you please stop saying that? Whatever it is that you say. Um, or you say like, hey, I feel like you don't really listen to my side. Could you hear me out? See how they respond. If they respond in the same way that they were before, um, you know, look at their actions, not the words. They may like say, oh, I'm sorry, I'll do better next time. And then the next time they do it again, that shows that they're a gaslighter and they're a huge manipulator, they're a narcissist. But if they apologize and then they try to do better, then that shows like that they realize that they, they are doing something unhealthy from their childhood and that they have work to do. So that will really reveal the gaslighters. Now, if you know you're dealing with a gaslighter, now it's really important that you really work on your sense of self and you have self-love. That's really important because people, gaslighters, they don't really care what you're saying. They will always try to push their narrative. They will always try to make you feel crazy. They have their own agenda. They don't care about your perspective or your feelings. So talking about your feelings with them until you're blue in the face, they don't care. So really work on how you feel about yourself, who you think you are. Not what other people tell you, but who do you think you are? What do you feel about yourself? And also understand like you can choose whose opinions you let in. If you really are not agreeing with someone, it's okay. You don't have to agree with them. That's part of codependency, feeling like you need to agree, you need to people please. You don't have to agree with people and that's okay. You can have your own opinions and ideas and it doesn't have to be like everyone else's. Which goes into the next thing is stand firm. Really, when 
you feel something or you're saying something, stand firm, you know, work on that confidence. Uh, when someone's trying to tell you, oh, you don't really remember things quickly, you can say, no, I remember exactly what happened. That scares gaslighters. They're like, confidence girl, like, I, I don't know what that is. What are you, who, who are you? Who are you doing with that? You need to let go of trying to get their approval or getting them to side with you or, or really care about what's right or wrong. That's again, that codependency, feeling like people need to approve of what you're saying. People need to validate or agree with you. They don't. You are completely allowed to be firm and stand in what you believe and say, no, this is what I'm thinking. So this is where the responding really comes into play. Rather than reacting to what they're saying and arguing and getting defensive, you respond to them. No emotional reaction, just keeping it just barely shallow, like, nope, this is what's going on and that's it. Because like I said, you're wasting your time trying to argue with them. So you don't need to argue, you say, no, I remember. And then you can absolutely walk away. You don't have to make them believe what you're saying or try to convince them, they don't care. So you need to let that go and just let them know like, no, nope, I remember, that's it, end of discussion. Or you say like, nope, it's not my imagination. This is what happened. Stand firm and be assertive with what you're saying. And then one of two things will happen. One, they will learn that they can't gaslight you anymore and they will change the way that they treat you. Or two, they'll just go away. They won't, you know, try it with you anymore. They'll eventually go do it to someone else because they're looking for their supply. And so then they'll just go away because they realize they can't get away with it. But one thing is for sure, if you're dealing with a gaslighter, the best thing you can do is go no contact and not deal with them. Cause like you said, they won't change. It doesn't matter. They have a narrative they're trying to portray. They want to be the victim and they want you to seem like you're crazy. They want to have their way. They want to manipulate you. So the best thing you could do is walk away. And if you can't because of financial reasons, like you have to be around them, whatever the reason, then make sure you stand firm in what you believe and say, no, I remember. Or no, I don't think so. And you don't have to argue with them back and forth. Just say, no, that's what I think. And then that's it. Just be firm. You don't have to overly explain yourself because it doesn't go anywhere with you. You, you can't, you don't try to convince them. Just, nope, I remember. There's no reaction. They're like, okay, what do I do with this? I'm bored, I'm gonna go bother someone else. So, gaslighting is a tactic that people use to manipulate others to make them feel crazy. And they do this because they can't deal with themselves and they don't like that. And they don't know how to have healthy relationships and they don't know how to deal with saying no or doing or admitting when they do things wrong. So they will try to push it on you that you're crazy. Um, and the way that you deal with this is that you make sure that you work on your side to self, you stand firm on what you believe and you don't react off of them. You make sure that you respond. What do you guys think? Leave it all in the comments below and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and share with someone you think may need it. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye guys. Another thing is you may make bad. What do you mean make bad? And they also do not want to, that didn't make sense. Another thing is, <laughs> I'm so weird.